Hello, my friend, and welcome to this episode of A Call to Leadership. I'm Dr. Nate Sala, your host. I am so glad you are here. Well, on this episode of the show, I'm going to talk about something with you that I have not talked about yet, but an aspect of leadership that is perhaps elusive, perhaps misunderstood, perhaps not even even thought about in the business environment, in the leadership space. An aspect of leadership called grace. Now you say, Nate, what the heck are you talking about? Grace. Well, I was just talking with a dear friend about this subject and I had to share it with you because it's so important, so relevant. It's not the idea of grace like being graceful, simple elegance, refinement of movement. No, it's not that kind of grace. And it's not the kind of grace what we would call having goodwill, the grace to admit when I'm wrong, right? It's not that kind of grace either. It's the kind of grace that is defined as undeserved favor or unmerited favor. Now, grace cannot be earned then. It's something that is given and given freely. It's often considered in terms of uh, spiritual terms. God's grace, the bridge built in our relationship, uh, lots of different ideas of grace in the character of man's relationship with God that we don't earn God's love. It's given to us. However, grace is also a term we can use throughout our journey as human beings. And I'll revisit that scriptural term in a little while. Right now, I want to talk a little bit about cultivating an environment that has grace as its central aspect. We're going to talk about ways that perhaps it doesn't work and ways it does work. And I just want to open with a story of my own life. When I was a kid growing up, single mom, there were areas mom had lots of grace and there's areas there there was no grace at all. Uh, if you've ever been around a, a Middle Eastern mom, there are stereotypes that are almost always true. In fact, all my buddies, <laughs> and we all had the same mom, if you will. Uh, if you back talked, if you looked at mom funny, man, I was getting a shoe and it wasn't necessarily even in uh, an immediate range. It could have been across the room. It was like a missile never missed. And uh, uh, that was that was a non-negotiable. There was no grace. There was no unmerited favor. In other ways, I found that uh, there was massive grace. One time when I was a kid, I, uh, I had to be like six or seven years old. And my mom had a Bronco, a Ford Bronco truck. And I put sugar in the gas tank. And uh, when my mama found out, well, the gas, the, the engine, uh, the engine ha- uh, ended up knocking and there were all kinds of problems with it. And she asked me what happened. I said, Mom, I, I put sugar in your gas tank because I, f- I, I heard that sugar is energy and, and, and it'll make your car go faster. And I, I want you to be able to go fast in your car. And I don't know what that motor cost her to fix or to replace or, or what it was. But I remember that I didn't get the beat down. I didn't get the shoe. I didn't get grounded. Um, I just was told that 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 wasn't, uh, that didn't work. And I remember that, that, that level of, of grace, of understanding, of compassion, even a sense of empathy. Uh, You know, this acknowledgement that she gave me that everyone makes mistakes. And she was allowing me room to grow. And I'll never forget it. I'll never forget that. And I never did it again, by the way. I never put sugar in a gas tank, right? It's, it's hilarious and not so hilarious at the same time. But even, even with this approach to having uh, grace in, in our journey, well, it, it has its... Uh, It has its set of challenges. And I want to take a closer look at a few of them with you. Because on the one hand, you might say, Nate, how does this even work in an environment, say a business environment, family environment? If you have 
this idea of compassion and letting things go, uh, uh, don't you don't you think that people will take advantage of that? They won't ever learn. They won't ever change. And in some cases, sure, under, too much understanding, too much compassion, too much empathy without balancing accountability with it can, can cause problems. Effective leaders, we must balance holding our team accountable, whether it's a family, whether it's a community, whether it's a business, while extending grace. What does that mean? Well, it means that it, however challenging it might be, we have to both ensure high standards, at the same time demonstrate understanding when someone falls short. So, so uh, where does this where does this show up? Well, this shows up uh, in in a business environment. I recently had an employee who has been stellar. I mean, high standards all the way, and and recently made made an error, and that error was was pretty significant. And so I went through, first I asked the question, hey, let's figure out where this error came from before I pass any judgment. And then we found the error was based on uh, uh, just grabbing the wrong document and, and using that document as a source document. It's just the wrong document. So that led to just an inaccurate, inaccurate work. And uh, the first thing I said was, and I know that you know you made a mistake. Uh, I said, beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up too much. And, and, and what I meant was just, you know, take a moment to think about what happened. I know that you're taking responsibility. And I know that you demand the highest standards. At the same time, I'm going to give you constructive feedback on how we can overcome this obstacle again in the first place without having this mistake again without harsh judgment, and working toward growth rather than punishment. And this works in a business environment. It works in a family environment. It works in a community environment. You know, this, this idea of unmerited favor works well when we have accountability and compassion working together. Now, here's the other thing about grace. Grace doesn't change the consequence. Grace doesn't change the reality of our challenges, the mistakes we make, right? Because sometimes we can't change the outcomes. We can't change the impact. I can't change the fact that this led to an error, an issue that we had to walk through and solve. But what I can do is I can keep from harshness. I can keep from, from judgment and I can work toward growth. You say, Nate, shouldn't punishment be a natural aspect? Look, consequences are consequences. I mean, if things go wrong, we've got to work together on what we, what we did wrong and how to make it right. And I don't look at it from the perspective of necessarily punishment. I just look at it from the perspective of, look, here is the, here is the challenge we faced. And if it's a situation to where... I gave you work or I gave you a responsibility that you were not qualified for, then the responsibility is on me. If you were qualified for it and you made an error, perhaps the error is I'm overworking you. Perhaps I've given you uh, too many responsibilities. Perhaps I haven't trained you enough. Perhaps I haven't measured where you need a break. You know, perhaps any of those things are going on. And I need to be able to understand where the issue came in. You say, Nate, is it really all on you, the leader? I want you to listen closely. Unfortunately, the answer, and fortunately, is yes. That doesn't mean that people can't take responsibility for when they make a mistake. But you've got to take, I've got to take responsibility for when someone missed the mark on my team and how I can help them to reach that mark in the future. And if they cannot, if they are unable to reach the mark from one perspective or another, I have to pull them off of the field and I got to put them on the bench. Sometimes some people 
are not ready for prime time. Maybe they're in a game and maybe they've got an injury. Maybe they're just not prepared. And I got to sideline you. It's okay. Because it's not about the one individual. It's about the team and winning the game. And so it's up to me as the coach to make sure that I've prepared all my players to win. And so I've got to understand that in this concept of grace. Now, the next part about grace is understanding this relationship between nurturing trust and psychological safety building. You see, you know, here's the thing about trust within teams. It's crucial for, for, for high levels of productivity, for creativity, but it takes time. It takes effort to create an environment where team members feel safe enough to take risks, to share ideas openly, by the way, and to admit when they've made a mistake without the fear of negative consequences, right? You say, Nate, what? Slow down. What do you mean without the fear of negative consequences? What if someone is terminated from their employment? You say you take them and put them on the bench. Isn't that a negative consequence? No, that's a positive consequence. Why? Because I have relieved them from making this mistake again and again. It would be a negative consequence for them to continue to operate in this space where they cannot hope to contribute to the win. It's, it's, a, it's a reshaping of thinking. So, so when, you're, when you're a grace-based leader, you work on fostering that psychological safety. You encourage open communication, active listening, creative opportunities for collaboration, no matter where it takes us, by the way. See, sometimes collaboration will take us one direction. Sometimes it's another. And we've got to get past our own expectations that our road will remain linear throughout our lives, they meander. The road continues to twist and turn and bend. Sometimes people are in our lives. Sometimes they're out of our lives. Sometimes I've got to take a step back. You know, grace doesn't mean that I am going to always shield people from reality. Uh, to the to the opposite, uh, grace means that I'm going to help people learn to feel psychologically safe enough in an environment, whether it's my home, whether it's my business, whether it's my community, so that when risks are taken, when we share ideas, when we are admit our mistakes, that it takes us to our desired shared end state. And sometimes that desired shared end state isn't going in the same direction. Sometimes the only thing we share is the idea that perhaps this agreement, this arrangement is not working the way it sits. We've got to find a new way. That's, that's a part of this idea to nurture trust because if people trust one another, then they'll trust that we each have our best interests at heart. And if we can continue to strive toward a mission together in creativity and honesty, then fantastic. Uh, if we can't, then that's okay too. It's not the end of the world, it's just another day. And that leads me to this idea then of expectations. You know, you know how do we manage expectations um, and manage resilience in this idea of grace? Right? In a world driven by results, by deadlines, it can be so tempting to adopt this harsh leadership style, this stoic leadership style that prizes the outcome above all else. However, you know what's going to happen? Burnout, stress, diminished morale. I mean, listen, team members will, no matter how good they are, no matter how strong they are, they can falter. So, so what, what, what a, what a grace-based leader focuses on is managing expectations by fostering a culture 
that values well-being, that values wholeness, harmony, completeness, that values personal growth. We understand, you understand the power of resilience and we support our teams in bouncing back from setbacks. That's the heart of the model of walking in grace, in, in the, 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 the weakness, if you will, that we have. And weakness is not, is not a bad thing, friend. You know, um, that's where the old scripture comes in that uh, my grace is sufficient. My power is made perfect in weakness. So, so what does that mean? It means that, look, when I am weak, he is strong. It's okay for me not to be perfect. It's okay for me not to be always firing on all cylinders because there's grace upon me. God has grace upon me. God has grace upon you. And it's when we are weak that we can recognize that sometimes we need grace too. And we can, we can receive that grace. And here's the other part of grace of receiving it. Sometimes if, if, you know, if, if you believe that, that God's grace is unlimited and God has grace on you, what's holding you back from having grace on yourself? Giving yourself a little bit of grace. Sometimes we forget that we deserve to give ourselves grace. When we embrace grace, we have to recognize that it involves self-awareness. That's what I'm saying. Continually reflecting on our own behavior, on our own biases, our own reactions, so that we can seek opportunities what for personal growth, understand our strengths, understand our weaknesses, live and lead authentically, because we can't hope to inspire anyone else to do the same unless we are natural and transparent and vulnerable in it. It's so important. You know, we, we underestimate the power of vulnerability. You know, we, we live in a world where we, we feel like we need to always be strong. And that's the, that's the, only, um, that's the only approach emotionless but that's really not the approach at all that's not humanity we're emotional creatures that doesn't mean that we can't manage our emotions that doesn't mean we can't regulate them but that doesn't mean also that uh, that we're robots and so when we live authentically sometimes we got to say hey you know what i'm having a rough day <sighs> It's, it's not always roses and chocolates. I've had them. I mean, you know, I'm an eternal optimist. If you've listened to the show, you hear, you know, my, my job is to spread optimism, spread hope. But I, I get down too. I sometimes make mistakes and I, I, I lament over them. I, I, you know, there's times where I've, I've made mistakes and I've spent days just like, man, what could I have done differently? I feel so bad. And I have to remember, Nate, give yourself a little grace, man. It's okay. Right? You're not a dirtbag. You made a mistake. Learn from it. Grow from it. Sometimes it's good to empathize not only with others, but with yourself. Actively listening to your own self. That is an important aspect of grace. You know, sometimes... We strive for perfection. I know I have. And it can be fleeting. In fact, it can just be out of reach. And I've, I've retooled my thinking around that to rather than strive to have perfection, to be a perfectionist. It's not even striving for excellence. Excellence is good. But more than ever now, I'm striving for wholeness completeness, harmony, purity. That doesn't mean I'm always a 10 at every level, giving every ounce. Sometimes it's less. 
you know, sometimes less is more. Sometimes if I uh, do less, I can give more my best. And that means that I have grace upon myself not to reach for the highest level of achievement in a certain area. Sometimes holistic achievement, holistic joy, fulfillment, meaning, purpose is the mastery that, uh, that, is, that, is, that is so needed to fill life with joy. And so for you, what does grace look like for you in this moment to give yourself grace in a certain area? Maybe, maybe you've, you've missed it with a family member. Maybe you've missed it with work or with friends, or maybe you've just missed it in an area that you thought over the last 30, 40, 50 years that you'd have been someplace else by now. Give yourself some grace. It's not about the expectation of where you thought you would be. It's about where you are in your heart with a sense of well-being and wholeness. In the journey called life, don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Don't worry about the benchmarks that you see this person and that person. You don't know everyone's life. You don't know what other people are going through. You see people on social media and Facebook, and you see all those smiles and laughs and, and all those great photos. You know what? I'm not trying to say anything about how people perceive their world, but those are just pictures. I call it fake book. And uh, the, we, oftentimes we show our, the best of ourselves in that moment. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of pain and sorrow and, and need for prayer and support on social media as well. But if we just look at the very best, we don't really pay attention to, you know what, other people are struggling too. And they need grace just as much as you and as I do. And uh, we can't get caught up in thinking, oh, everybody's got a fantastic life and my life is just horrible. You know what, your, your life can be horrible. And we need to have compassion and empathy and caring for you as well. And some of the unspoken needs that people have are just as important. And so understanding that, living in that, and, and is, is, such, is such an important aspect. The unmerited favor that we give one another is so critical so that, 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 that we can create a space, sometimes through dialogue, just demonstrating genuine care first for ourselves and then for others to understand those around us, listen actively, gain insights, gain perspectives, collaborate, problem solve, and grow so that we can celebrate and be resilient and improve together and emphasize, listen, mistakes are opportunities for growth, you know? Uh, we can turn our obstacles into opportunities and support developing and growing together by overcoming our challenges, becoming grace based in our leadership models. We can foster more trust, more collaboration. I am convinced we will grow extraordinarily. And I hope and pray that each of us will embrace grace, not only to benefit our team, but enable us to grow as leaders. 